Our next guest is known to some as PVZ, to others as Paige Van Zandt. In fact, her husband is a product of the Contender Series show, and I still feel till this day that it was a huge mistake to not sign him, but that's a different argument for a different day. She announced uh, recently that she underwent surgery again on her arm, and she posted a most gruesome photo of said arm on social media. Uh, in fact, I was eating when I saw this photo, and uh, I stopped eating promptly afterwards. It was very graphic. Do we have that photo? Are we allowed to show that photo? Is that a thing we're allowed to do? Or are, if you're eating, take a break right now. Oh my God. Jeez <laughs> Louise. Paige, how are you? Oh my gosh. Look at this. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I like saying hello to you as I look at the inside of your arm right over there. Inside uh, of my body. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is something else. Uh, how are you feeling? Good. You know what? I'm feeling good. I'm you know, all casted up. I'm actually at Starbucks right now. Uh, it's my first day where I was allowed to be out of the house for the first four days. I had to have my arm elevated, uh, 20, 20 out of 24 hours a day. So I had to like sit on the couch for 20 hours a day. Oh. I was going absolutely insane. So this is the day I got to get out of the house and, um, I'm just hanging out at Starbucks. Well, I appreciate you doing this in the midst of your sort of, uh, you know, get out of jail free uh, moment. When did you have that surgery? Uh, it was on Thursday. So early Thursday morning, I had the surgery. Um, so I'm about, I guess, four or five days out of surgery, I would say. Uh, yeah. So it's, um, you know, surgery number three. It's been rough. This one, actually, though, I will say I have an extremely positive mindset about it. Um, been here. I've done it before. Uh, the surgeon was amazing and everything. It's been the smoothest surgery so far. So, um, you know, I'm actually feeling, feeling good. Okay. Why did you need the surgery? Uh, yeah. So everything went fine with my first break, like where I broke my arm the first time. So I broke it the first time, had surgery, surgery failed, broke it again. Had, you know, had surgery the second time. This one, I fought in January, beat Rachel Ostevich. Uh, was sparring the week after and I fractured in a completely different spot in my arm. I fractured around the plate, oh. um, which happens, I guess. And it, yeah, it sucks. And I went, you know, uh, a month or so before I even got the results back that was fractured. I knew it was cause it hurt extremely bad. I went to my husband's fight for Bellator, um, you know, traveled a little bit and then I got the phone call and I was like, ah, I knew my arm was broken. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't heal correctly. They thought it was going to heal, you know, the way a normal bone should. But because I wasn't casted, there was too much movement at the fracture site. So my arm, I got another like a hyperplasia non-union, something like that. Oh and uh, that's yeah, where we are now. And, and so you said this is your third surgery all on the same arm? Third surgery all on the same arm. Uh, two on the same spot and then one in a different spot. So this is the third plate I've had in my arm. Uh, feeling good though. You know, I think that also it's the reason I posted all those like nasty pictures of my arm on Instagram. I wanted people to see like, I'm not just, it's not just a broken arm. Like I'm going in to have my whole arm basically reconstructed. And this is the third time I've gone through this whole process. And it's a, like a legit injury. It's not like an easy, you know, just put a cast on it and you know, fix it type thing. I've had extreme trauma to my arm. Uh, but you know, at the same time, it is just an arm. I'm so thankful that I didn't, you know, oh my gosh, I feel bad for like poor Sage Northcutt who fractured his entire face. Uh, this is just an arm. This is like, you know, it's just an arm. I've been here before, uh, gone through the whole healing process before, and I'm going to be right back at it. I'm keeping myself extremely busy, which is great. Uh, so that's going to, you know, keep my mind preoccupied, but I actually think the surgeon said I should be back training 100% in 12 weeks. How are you keeping yourself busy? Uh, different things here and there. I've done different interviews with people. Um, I started vlogging, which no videos are up on my YouTube channel yet, but I did start a YouTube channel with vlogs. Okay. <laughs> so you can see this whole process. Uh, that is a TBD to be when the first video goes up because I don't know how to edit videos. I know how to film myself, but uh, I'm still working on the whole editing thing. Um started vlogging. I've done some interviews here and there, um, working with different companies. I don't know, just doing little things. I'm trying to just stay as busy as possible. Now, I'm not going to say no to any opportunity. Sure. Sure. No, of course. Uh, why did you have to keep your arm elevated for 20 out of 24 hours? 
Uh, to reduce swelling. So anytime you have your arm like uh, down by your side, the blood rushes to your arm. So they don't want it to swell up. Uh, if I had too much swelling and pressure around my arm, it actually restricts the blood flow to uh, my ulna, which is like your smaller of the two bonins in your arm. So uh, if you keep your arm elevated and like keep everything, uh, it just reduces all of the swelling around the fracture site. Um, it keeps all the, like the blood, like the, you know, bad, bad restriction swelling away from your arm. Are, are you worried that this is going to be something that is just going to keep coming up, like it, that it's going to halt your career? Is there any concern of that? No, not really. You know, I'm only 25 and uh, I have have a long fighting career ahead of me. Um, of course, this sucks. You know, there is a lot of people who have had a lot more injuries than me, but this has been, you know, one really frustrating one. Uh, I will say I have to be 100% honest with myself. I rushed and I got I wasn't even supposed to take that fight with Rachel. My arm never really technically got cleared. I went to like four doctors and I finally found one that would clear me. Oh. And um, so <laughs> snuck into that one. Uh, so I was technically I just wasn't honestly ready. So then I made it through the fight, which was great. But then I came back and, you know, fractured my arm immediately. I was just thankful enough I was able to win a fight before fracturing it again. So I just, I need to be a completely honest with myself and go through the physical therapy and really wait it out to make sure that I get the genuine, honest doctor clearance that my arm is ready to start taking impact again. And it was so in training, I was, I'm supposed to wear a arm brace anytime I start elbowing people and I did not have it on and I elbowed somebody. Oh and no, that is, broke my arm. that, that, that will do it. Yeah. Wait, so just so to that be, was my fault. just to be clear, you had three doctors who told you not to fight who didn't clear you and then you found a fourth and that person cleared you and then you took the fight so they didn't say it. they said it's a bad idea okay. that and that i could re-break my arm it was i uh not that no i can't i guess technically they can't really tell me i can't do anything but uh they just said it wasn't a good idea to fight and i had a few of them say it wasn't a, a good idea but i was like yeah but i'm not gonna die and he's like well yeah technically so uh they i got a clearance so it you know you do what you do for the things you love. Sure. Um, and, and just to be clear as well, every time you do the surgery, is it a new plate that goes in? Do they replace the old with the new? Yeah, it's a completely new plate. So mm -hmm. I've had three in my arm. I have one at home I got to keep. Wow. Um, this is, yeah, plate number three. So the reason this one is going to take a little bit longer to heal is they had to take all of the, like, the old plate out. And my fracture was lower on my arm. So they had to move the plate over like maybe four or five inches. So I have to wait for all my old screw holes to fill in. Um, and then this new fracture site. So yeah, they have to go and take the old plate out and put a new one in. How, how big is the plate? Um, well, I mean, it pretty much l runs the length of that picture. Oh my gosh. I guess. That okay. I posted on Instagram. It's a big one. Yes. I would say maybe six inches. Oh my Lord. Uh, I think Horrific. Yes. Uh, and, and I appreciate you sharing. I, I was kind of joking about it, but it is, it is fascinating and, and hopefully yeah. it does give insight, uh, to, to the casual person out there, what you, what, you know, what you guys are going through. Um, on a positive note, congratulations on the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition, uh, honor, Thank right? You. Th that's a big deal. How did that come about? That was awesome. Gosh, I, uh, my management team just called and said they had uh, Sports Illustrated reached out to them and asked if I, there was in any interest from me. And, uh, you know, I had just found out my arm was broken. Oh. Uh, but I was like, yes, let's do it. So I uh, actually flew from Alaska to Mexico for one day, shot all the whole Sports Illustrated magazine uh, in one day. I flew straight from Mexico to Las Vegas to see my arm surgeon. Um, so it was uh, a crazy experience, but so awesome. And I'm hoping it leads to new things. I would love to do like the ESPN body edition would be awesome to do like the next thing off of this magazine. Uh, I'm hoping that it continues to lead to more things. It's awesome that, you know, us female fighters are being represented. And, and so I'm, I'm wondering, like, have you already felt the impact of being in Sports Illustrated feature? Like, are, are you already getting people reach out to you that maybe don't even know that you're a fighter? Gosh, I mean, I feel like it's a lot of the people who got it are already my fan base. Okay. Um, there has been quite like a few people that just saw me in it. I think the thing that's changed the most for me is anytime I go into a magazine store or like a grocery store or the airport, I always try to find my magazine and put <laughs> like my picture on the front of the shelf. You open up the book and you put your picture like the featured one? Yeah, and then put it right on the front of the shelf. Do you ever get caught doing this? It. 
Uh, I'm sure I have, but it's like, huh, it's like a really fun, exciting yeah, thing. I just love it. It was, it was an awesome experience. So I'm really proud of it. Was Austin there when you did this? He was. Yeah. So I was shooting my magazine and he got to just lay on, lay in a hammock and drink tequila for the day. Oh my. Uh, of course we wanted to stay in Mexico a lot longer. Um, we still have yet to take a honeymoon. Uh, but you know, of course didn't get to happen. I had to fly to Vegas to get my arm looked at. Well, the, the correct answer is every day is a honeymoon, right? Yes, that's so true. <laughs> every day is a vacation in our lives. So. Right. Um, and by the way, I, I was just curious, um, your teammate and friend Chael Sonnen retired on, on Friday. What did, you, what did you think when you saw that? What were the emotions that you were experiencing when you saw him retire? Gosh, of course. You know, I've known Chael for a long time, and I know his story, and I know why he was pursuing a championship. Um, and through his career, you know, I felt like he was robbed of a championship once in his life. And he's been chasing that for so long. Um, of course, he's been a mentor to us. We call him Uncle Chael. He's um, one of Austin's main training partners and teammates. So we texted him immediately after. I'm hoping he stays active in the gym, but he's left such a legacy and really created a lot of momentum in the sport. And a lot of people try to mimic what he does, but there, there's really nobody like him. And it's an honor that I got to, you know, train with him and be a part of his journey while he was still an active fighter. But I know he's not going to go away. You know, he's Chael son and he's going to be around forever. And I think it's exciting. And hopefully he steps up at our team um, here in Portland as more of like a leadership role and coaches or, you know, just is around. He's um, an amazing person to be around. So you said and very well said, and I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you're hopeful 12 week recovery process. 12 week recovery process. Yeah. So I should be back. And that was 12 weeks from last Thursday. So we're one week into it so far. Uh, I, yeah, really hoping, um, 12 week recovery process. I I'm aiming for, you know, there's always a really big card at the end of the year, uh, for the UFC. So I'm hoping for that end of the year card. Uh, true or false. Whenever that fight happens, is that the last fight on your deal? It is, yeah. So I have, yeah, one fight left on my UFC contract. Are, are you planning on fighting it out? I am, yeah. And, you know, it's more, for me, it's, um, you know, I want to prove my worth. And obviously with my arm injuries, I've had, you know, three surgeries in a row now. I feel like you know, even though I am so popular, I guess I've been doing amazing things outside of the UFC, you know, Sports Illustrated, Dancing with the Stars, all these amazing things. I want to show like, hey, I'm a huge player in this division. I'm a huge player in the UFC. And I think it's going to take one more fight to prove that. And, um, you know, more than anything, I'm just focused on getting back in the cage. I don't want to put any pressure on myself or any stress behind anything. I, I just want to fight. Okay, one last thing. Um, Valentina Shevchenko, she's the champion in your weight class. Do you foresee anyone yeah. <laughs> dethroning her anytime soon? She's a very scary fighter. Uh, what she did to Jessica, I was, do, you, do you see anyone out there? Like you're, you're, let's let's exclude you for a moment because you're on, you know, yep. you're on the sidelines. Is there anyone out there that you think can give her a shot, or are you the one who will dethrone her? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna be real honest. She's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, I don't think you know. I plan on being in the UFC and training for, or, you know, fighting for forever. She'll probably retire before I fight for the title. To be totally honest, you know, I'm only 25, so I want to, you know. Get, work my way up uh as far as anyone i see right now to dethrone her um no I, there's nobody she's amazing and i know that i feel like she said you know bad things about me in the past but i don't care her striking is like absolutely next level she's so um gosh methodical in her striking and technical and it's like like nothing i've ever seen before so i'm you know working on being like her so she's the one I want. I want striking like her. So congrats to the champ. That was just a, an awesome performance. Wait a second. She said something bad about you. I feel like she says like only positive things about everyone. What did she say? Did I miss this? Oh, I don't know. No, I don't know. I feel like some like in the past, something Dana said something. I'm not really sure. So don't okay. quote me on that. Yeah. So, no, she's awesome champ. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was just I was I was a little bit shocked from that. I mean, who would say anything bad about you? Right. Right? That's what I think. I'm so nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'm glad that you're in good spirits because I know three surgeries. By the way, are those the only three surgeries of your life? No. I, I mean, my only three because of injuries. I've had right. my appendix taken out. Oh, gosh. I've had my tonsils taken out. I've had my adenoids taken out. Oh, geez. Um, okay. Yeah. 
So but no, sport I'm related. Familiar. Sports re- sport related only injury that right. had required surgery. Well, I'm happy to hear that you're in uh, good spirits. Happy to see you're in good spirits. Good luck. Uh, maybe now you could take a little bit of time off um, now that you're, you're you're on the sidelines. And Austin has a fight. W- when's his next fight? His fight's in August. So, uh, which I don't know that it's been announced yet, but oh. he's fighting in August. Sorry. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, and so he's actually moving up to 185 for oh, this fight. So wow. he's going to test okay. the division at 185. All right. I like it. Well, good luck to him. I look forward to that as well. Thank you for doing this, Paige. Good luck to you. Get well soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Bye. There she is. Paige Van Zandt joining us. Always great to talk to her and uh, sad to hear about the surgery, but... Hopefully she recovers quickly and interesting to note, one fight left on her deal. That's a really interesting development. Her husband, of course, Austin Vanderfort, uh, fights for Bellator. So that is something that I think we should keep our eyes on.